Hi everyone, this is the start of a new series where we are looking at software engineering at 10,000 feet, which means we are looking at software engineering at a very high level. What are the general things that happen and what we should know before we join this career. At the end, you will know what software engineers do in their day to day lives. The first thing that will probably happen when you join uh, an organization or you're a freelancer, you have some sort of project or task that you have been assigned to do and this comes from a business. So let's say you have joined Google. Google is a business. It has one project which is Google Maps. Your team belongs to one product of Google Maps. Let us assume that you calculate ETA. In this team, you, the young software engineer, has been assigned to find traffic jams and this will help you set the ETA in the right way. And you, an individual engineer, are going to be looking at one small component of that project. Okay, this is usually how things work in a large company. In a small company or a startup, what happens is you are part of a team again, but the team is working on the entire product. A startup usually has just one product. This is the task that you have been given. So day one, they give you a laptop and then they say, let's do the task. Most folks uh, have their imagination stopping at this point. When they think about joining a company and you know doing tasks, they think that, okay, now I'll be writing the code for this. No. Very important before you do anything is to document and track the task. Even in very large organizations like Google, Microsoft, where there are project managers who make sure that the tasks are tracked and documented in the right way. They make sure that the teams are not having any issues. They make sure that the deadlines are being set properly and also maintained. Even there, you are expected to document and track your tasks. Okay, you set things up. So for this, you need some sort of process or tool. And this brings us to the first tool, which is task management system. An uh, example of this would be Jira. Some organizations have their own task management systems or they write on top of this, but Jira is extremely popular. Uh, when it comes to software engineering, uh, you might have Fabricator and so on. What does Jira or what do these tools actually give you? They give you a way in which you can note down one of these tasks that, you know, I need to find traffic jams in a given route. How do you remember this tomorrow? How do you discuss this tomorrow? So you can think of setting up a Google Doc and having everybody discuss this idea or this task over there. Tomorrow somebody comes and says, hey, hey the task has changed. We were thinking about traffic jams, but specifically we are looking at traffic jams in the city, not outside because that will be too expensive to calculate or that's not a product requirement. So a way in which you can talk about this feature, talk about its completion, talk about its goals, talk about everything would be a Google Doc, some place where you can keep all the relevant information. That is what is offered by Jira as a ticket. A ticket is a place where you can track, store, relevant information, set the status of a given task. You can say that a ticket is now ready to be picked up by an engineer. That's probably when it's going to come to you. So when you're ready to work on the ticket, you mark it as started and then you start, you know, actually thinking about, let's say the code or any kind of design that you need to do for this. Eventually the ticket will be marked as complete. Before that, you might have certain stages like I'm testing the ticket. So that's one stage. Uh, I'm getting the ticket reviewed. So I'm getting the code reviewed. That will be one status of the ticket. It's a state management or a life cycle system. That's what Jira provides you.